Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome little ultra portable laptop that I recently picked up. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, it's no secret that I love the Ryzen APUs, and that's exactly what this is powered by. But when it comes to the built-in Ryzen graphics, there is a little more to be desired, at least with the Vega graphics and the 4000 and 5000 series chip. But with this one here, we've actually got a dedicated NVIDIA GPU in this super small form factor, and this is actually something I haven't taken a look at on the channel, really haven't given it two thoughts. But this has an NVIDIA MX450 GPU with 2GB of GDDR6 VRAM. Real quick, I'll give you a size comparison. This is my normal carry around laptop, and this is the ZenBook 14, which we're going to be taking a look at in this video. The size here really is dramatic, especially when holding them or putting them inside of a book bag. And the tough laptop that I usually carry around does have a lot more power. But when I'm on the go, I never utilize it 100%, and I think that's where the ZenBook 14 is really going to come in handy. But before we jump into the specs and test this Ultrabook out, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. Now, there is one thing to keep in mind. When upgrading your PC using a key like this, you can change your GPU, you can change the RAM, the hard drives, the CPU. The only thing that'll stop this key from working in the future is swapping out the motherboard, but they're definitely cheap enough. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose Next, choose Activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. This is known as the ZenBook 14, and they were recently on sale over at Best Buy for $5.19, but I went to my local store, and I was able to pick up an open box in great condition for $438. You can actually check the website for open box near you. I'll leave a link in the description. And I've been doing some testing with this Ultrabook, and performance is actually really great for what we have here. It's powered by a Ryzen 5 5500U. For the dedicated graphics, we've got the NVIDIA MX450, the only real downside to this unit here is the RAM is non-user upgradable, and I picked up the 8GB version, but they do make a 16GB version. I do love the design of this Ultrabook. It's constructed of aluminum. We've got a huge trackpad, backlit keyboard, and a 14-inch IPS 1080p display. When it comes to I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we have a full-size USB 3.1 port, micro SD card reader, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Moving over to the left-hand side, we get a full-size HDMI port and two USB Type-C ports. These are USB Type-C 3.2 ports. When it comes to the specs for the CPU, this is using the Ryzen 5 5500U. We've got six cores, 12 threads, with a base clock of 2.1 GHz and a boost up to 4.0. Right out of the box, this is running at 20 watts, but in performance mode, this will go up to 30. You can get this with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X. It's running at 4,266 megahertz. And along with the 5500U, we've got the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. But we also have a dedicated NVIDIA MX450 with 2 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. This came with 256 gigabytes of storage. It's using an NVMe M.2 SSD. It also has Wi-Fi 6 built-in, Bluetooth 5.0, and out of the box, this was running Windows 11. We've got a 1080p IPS display, 50 watt hour battery, and it only weighs 2.9 pounds. When it comes to everyday PC performance, this thing is really snappy. And in the past, we've tested the 5500U on the channel. Six cores, 12 threads. I mean, it's got plenty of power to get you by as long as it's clocked correctly. And out of the box, this is running at 20 watts, but you can go into the ASUS settings and turn it to performance mode. It'll take it up to 30 watts, but it only works at 30 watts on AC power. But 20 watts is plenty. You want to get some web browsing out of the way, email checking, some light photo editing, light video editing. The 5500U can definitely handle it. 
Another thing it's got going for it is full-size HDMI out, which will do 4K60. So if you did want to plug it into a bigger monitor, you could use HDMI, but we've also got video out of the USB ports on the side here. But overall, it's a really snappy experience. Asus didn't hold the 5500U back in this machine at all. I'm definitely going to be jumping into some PC gaming because the performance on this is really impressive for what we have here, but the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. Let's go ahead and check those out first. Here we have Geekbench 5, and remember, the 5500U is a Zen 2 CPU. Single core, 1105, multi, 5269. Not bad at all for a low-powered mobile CPU. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with that MX450. Here we have 3 Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark. We got a total score of 8,865. For 3 Mark Night Raid, 19,762. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,914. So obviously, these scores aren't looking that impressive when you compare it to a full-fledged gaming laptop or a gaming desktop. But for an ultra portable coming in at 2.9 pounds, these scores are looking pretty decent. Now it's time to see how this thing can really game. The first game we have here is Forza Horizon 5, and this is really impressive performance for what we have here. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix, no resolution scale going, and I got an average of 76 FPS by the end of my run here. Not bad at all, and if you did want to take it down to 900p, we could do all medium settings and get an average of around 64. Basically, what you do with this is just lock VSync on and be content playing this at 60 FPS medium settings. But to tell you the truth, I still think this little mix that I got going on with low medium at 1080 looks good enough, especially on this smaller IPS display. We're only working with a 14 inch display here. It looks really good and it's playing perfectly fine. Next up, we've got Street Fighter V, very high settings, 1080p, no resolution scale. It's going to play through this at 60 all day. Really great performance out of the MX450 paired up with that 5500U, especially when it comes to fighting games. Here we have GTA V, and I completely understand that this is an older game. Still a great one to play, though. We're at 1080p, normal settings, and I got an average of 82 FPS out of this little laptop. For being such a thin and light little unit, we're seeing some really good performance when it comes to gaming on the MX450 here. Moving over to The Witcher 3, we're at 900p with a low medium mix. We could do this at 1080p low, but there's a few settings that I personally like to change, and we were dipping under 60. It was few and far in between, but overall, taking it down to 900p on a display like this still looks really good, and we're getting an average of 78 FPS out of this one. Next up, we've got God of War, and if you don't mind playing this at 30 FPS, you can set it to original settings, 1080p, and it's going to run at 30 all day. Just lock it right there. But I went down to 720p, we're still at the original settings, and with a setup like this, I'm getting an average of 68 FPS. Going into this, personally, I thought we'd be in the mid-40s, maybe a low 50s with it, even at the 720p original resolution here. But 68 FPS on this laptop is really great performance. And again, at 1080p, you can lock this at 30, and it looks absolutely amazing. I had high hopes for Elden Ring. I was really hoping we could get a steady 60 out of it at 720p low, but unfortunately we only averaged 47 FPS. And this has kind of been the case across the board with these lower end GPUs, whether it's a dedicated GPU like the MX450 or even integrated graphics like the Radeon 8 graphics, overclocked as much as we can with the desktop CPU. At least we're over 30 here. It's still playable like it is. And finally, we have Cyberpunk 2077. With the latest updates, this has been working really well on lower end GPUs. Not quite at 60, now with resolution scale turned way down, we could probably get around 60 out of this. But the way I've got it set up right now is 720p low settings, and I'm only averaging 45 FPS. When it comes to battery life, you can get around 10 hours of video streaming with the brightness set to around 60%. Six hours, web browsing, kind of medium use, just messing around with everything. And when it comes to gaming, it's going to depend on what game you're playing and how hard it's pushing the system. You can get one to four hours, it just really depends on how hard you want to push it with that game. 
But I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this little laptop, and I think this is gonna be my new carry around. I've got that 14 inch IPS display, it's a non touch display, backlit keyboard, it's only a single zone, it's a white LED backlit keyboard with about four points of brightness. Looks great, definitely gets the job done. We've got a big trackpad here, and when it comes to gaming on the go, personally, I don't mind playing at 720p. This screen does look really good, even with something like God of War only running at 720p here with those original settings, it still looks great because we have that compact display. If we were to scale that up on a 50 inch TV, it wouldn't look so good, but on this 14 inch IPS display, I can definitely get by playing these games on the go. So yeah, if you're looking for an Ultrabook that has some decent GPU performance and a thin and light package, this is one that I could recommend, but I wouldn't pay over $500 for it. If you can catch it on sale over at Best Buy or wherever you want to shop, or get an open box for around 430 to 450 then I'd say this would be totally worth it if you're in the market for a laptop like this. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this Ultra Book, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this thing, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.